Oh yeah, that's right. I do, I do world building stuff on this channel too. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody! Welcome to Nga. Today, I'm going to be showing you something that's pretty cool that I've known about for a while and I've wanted to do a video on it for a while, but my, my time constraints have prevented me from doing anything about it. And I've been working on some other pretty big videos too, so I figured this would be a good video to show off right about this time, as I'm in the final stretch to reach a thousand subscribers. As as we are recording this video, I currently have 959 out of a thousand subscribers. No, no, nothing, no big deal. Just, just my my life dream since I was like 10 years old to get to a thousand subscribers. No big deal. And anyway, so today what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to make a map, a custom map, using Civ 5's SDK. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'm going to show you. It's basically, yeah, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. I mean, first of all, this requires that you have to have the game Sid Meier's Civilization 5. Again, Civ 6 has something like this, and it's probably a pre pretty similar setup, but... I don't like Civ 6 as much. Civ 5 seems to kind of be like the the default, like the zeitgeist is still on Civ 5. Like it, if anyone has like a Civ game, it seems to be that most people have Civ 5. And that's the one that I made all my maps on, so too bad. Here we go. Okay, so it used to be super easy to download the SDK, but unless I'm missing something, they've made it no longer a thing that you can do straight from Steam's page, which is really stupid because this is a really cool tool. So really you have to go onto the internet, the actual internet, and you have to go to this page here at this link, which I'll put in the description, and you have to manually install it from here and it should hypothetically open up Steam and then have it download for you from there, which is pretty dumb. In the end, once you get it, you get the icon, and then you get this little thingy open here, and this is actually what you can do to do any kind of modding to Civ 5. What you want to do is world builder, and we're going to do some, some world building, wink wink, with the world builder. There we go. Alright, so it gives you a chance to do new map, load map, or mods. I'm going to do load map first, just going to pull something out. I'm going to do the EFC Big World, um, which is just a world map that I made of the future Earth in which Autojune is, is spoken. So this is pretty cool. The Civ 5 SDK allows you to completely custom craft an entire Civ 5 world. Alright, so this one right here is, this is the one that I was playing whenever I was doing the live streams. You know, I did like those first five live streams of me playing Civ 5 in the Elf Wonk map. Well, this is the entire Elf Wonk map right here. I created it 100% from scratch, and I tried to make it as accurate as possible. And of course, you know, it, it, it's it's a very big map. I made it the huge map um, so that I could have as many details put into what the, the peninsula looks like as possible. And so you can see everything is divided into hexagons, right? Because that's, that's, you know, how you play Civ and when you look closely there's a lot of information contained in each of these cells each of these little red things here is a potential spawn point right this is where a civilization could start the game so it's pretty helpful to see where those are and you could also get those randomized at any point you could just kinda like shuffle where the spawn points are before you save the map to try and make them as good as possible what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to create a new one, right? So you get to choose the size of it, get to completely set up the dimensions, generate blank right here. So you see, you can select the age of the world, you can say like, oh, I want the world to be specifically, uh, specifically cool, I want the rainfall to be wet, I want the sea level to be high, I want the resources to be abundant. And then you accept that map and it creates this world for you, right? And so then you have to go to a tool up in this top corner. A tool up in this top corner. And that tool is called the plopper. There's also the paint tool, which is honestly a lot more helpful, which allows you to create big old streaks of land. And you see how it creates like a little coast around it if it's out in the ocean? 
which is pretty cool. So say you wanted to create like some some continent, you could say like, oh, I want it to be a a hex shape, and I want it to be a huge brush. Or let's not do huge yet. Let's do uh, let's do large. You can kind of create a series of of islands going through here, right? <clears throat> you know, you can you can create it however you want. Change the brush size. Just kind of bloop bloop. This is actually looking pretty cool so far. Yeah, so I mean, it's not like, it's not gonna look like a Middle Earth map, but it is a good way if you want and you need ideas to help you start a world and you wanna figure out how you're gonna make this world look and how you're gonna make this world's climate work and etc. This is a great way to start. Hell yeah. Say, I wanna change a portion of this continent to plains over here. I'm gonna make you a little bit of plains up here. Cool. All right, then you can also add features, right? Or you can add ice, you can add jungle, marsh, oasis, floodplain, po forest, fallout, like if you want the nuclear radiation everywhere, and atoll. Now, a thing that you have to worry about is the world wrap, which I kind of didn't correctly pay attention to right there. <laughs> because now there's going to be a massive, like, leap from no water to a bunch of water over here. Sorry about my activate windows thing. Hang on a sec. Yeah, so technically ice is a feature, so you have to clear it. It's not technically like a separate thing. Mountains are apparently a terrain and not a feature. You don't want too much uh, too much mountain in there, because mountains are the things that you can't cross at all in Civ V. And, but then I want to put hills in between, because, you know, you want, you want hills to lead up to mountains. Right? So we got hills going in all this area in between. Yeah, no, this area is going to be pretty snowy. Pretty snowy indeed. Then another cool thing that you can do, you can go to continent type. And on continent type, it's just split between Americas, Asia, Africa, and Europe. But it's pretty much completely arbitrary. So if you want to just, like, on the map visually delineate different areas, you can just say that, like, okay this area is one continent you know it says asia but it doesn't really matter right so it's it's like it's a completely arbitrary way to divide your world into categories which is which i think is pretty cool i think it's pretty nice but yeah not only that but you can add in rivers where it opens up a, a big old set of matrices like a bunch of vertexes for you and basically all you have to do is just connect the dots in there it's really hard to see like, it's really hard to see, especially when you're watching the video, but over here you can see, like, I'm just creating a river that goes right there. Let's say, like, these mountains have a bunch of springs in them, so I want this river to go from here to here to here to here to here to here. Pretty cool, huh? You can slap units in spots. Like, you can say, like, oh yeah, I want this continent here, you know, fake quasi-Europe. I want them to have just countless an army of just barbarian elephants just absolutely flooding this entire region right here and then just like that you have you have an army of african forest elephant barbarians just there <laughs> you could have it in the ancient era but you could have goddamn artillery barbarians just sitting there on the front lines like this is gonna be a hellish world to live in but still and then really all you can add in is barbarians but still and then in miscellaneous you can uh, this is where you add in the uh, resources where you can hit randomize resources randomize goodies and then you basically scatter it, and so there, there goes in all of the, uh, the all the spawn points, all the resources, all the natural wonders, and everything. It just kind of scatters them in, and like honestly, I'm okay with that, especially if you're trying to create this world from scratch and you're like looking for ideas. I think that's pretty helpful. When you go back to the plopper, you can. This is where you can manually input resources. Like like over here, let's say. Let's say I want to make this area, like, the iron hub of the world. Like, whoever spawns in this spot is gonna have, like, all the iron that the world could ever want. You could put city ruins, encampment, ancient ruins, trading post, fishing boats, plantation, camp, oil well. So, like, you can, you can literally have it so that an entire, just, unused civilization is just waiting there. You can also put in roads that, yeah, roads. 
Ugh, okay, yeah, you can you can tell I have a lot of fun just creating these like world maps and just spamming chaos on there But yeah, you can definitely legitimately spend a lot of time on here And also, you know, just like I did with the elf wonk map instead of making it a map for an entire planet You can make it just a map for an entire world and I just have ice and mountains blocking it on the edge so yeah the, there's a ton that you could do with this and then whenever you're done like it just you know you go to the description i'm gonna say like uh thick pelago because why not and then i'm gonna save it as and it automatically goes to like the civ 5 like custom civ 5 maps that are hidden inside of your civ 5 world file basic thick pelago and then there you have it and just like that here we are I'm playing as the Celts in the custom world that I just created I really oh no I, I really hope that I didn't spawn in the area with the barbarian horde alright so yeah that, that that's it that's a basic tutorial on how to create a custom map in, Civ, in Sid Meier's Civilization 5 and again the process is almost the same in Civ 6 I haven't done it much but I've experimented with it a teeny bit. I just like Civ 5 a lot better. It's a lot cheaper to get and I think it's a better game. So that that's my personal shout out to Civ 5. You know, you can make some decent maps on it and you could play Civ 5 and you could use it as help for your world building. There we go. I do world building. You know, you can figure out what linguistic regions exist in there and you could put your conlangs on certain continents and all that. You could just take a screenshot of it and then you could just kind of slap it as one of your sources for ma making maps on your world and all that. It's, it's a cool tool and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you are excited for us to get to a thousand subscribers because you know that I am and I know that I am and it's going to be a good, good time. Yeah, so I mean, so so that's basically all I got for you today. I will see you guys in the next video. Alright? Agma Schwa, aka, I'm gonna head on out. Bye bye Ah, mmm, it's winter, I'm wearing long sleeves, yeah! Woo! Alright, bye. This is actually, like, really fun. Like, I, I, I should really get to editing this video. But like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting hooked. <laughs> Help me, save me from my addiction to Civ 5. Or don't.